tell me a ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable but is entirely true. Hello, my name is Brandy Stark and I am a paranormal investigator. I've been doing paranormal investigations since 1997 and I am not a psychic or sensitive, but I am an academic. I've studied the role of ghosts in culture and um, I, like I said, I have had tons of investigation experience. So uh, the, the stories that are actually being told in this stitch are really kind of cool because they're very much tying into stories that people tell me where a lot of times it's family or it's um, a series of themed hauntings tied to a location, but everybody has that thing that happened to them and they're like, mm, did that really happen? And what do I make of it? So I actually have multiple categories because I have so many experiences, but I thought I'd trade this in a little bit of a different vein. Um, in the early 2000s, I wrote a, a little essay because I am a third generation pug owner. I love pugs, but I theorize that because pugs are bred to be companions, uh, that they're really very human centered, they're very domestic, that they were not designed, uh, you know, for the instincts that keep other canoids alive. So uh, I wrote this article that said I didn't think pugs were going to be very sensitive to ghosts. And then people started sending me ghost pug stories. So it was really cool. Uh, and it kind of started me on a lifelong journey of researching uh, ghost animal stories. Uh, if you'd like to hear more, I have a podcast called Paranormal Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Uh, but I think you can find it almost anywhere. But my very first encounter uh, with uh, a subgenre of animal ghosts that I call the shadow animals uh, was on a paranormal investigation that we were doing down in Temple Terrace, uh, which is kind of a suburb of uh, Tampa Bay. And um, while we were in there, we were in the area of highest activity, and I had a Sony Handycam, because I'm that old, and I'm filming the room because... You know, things are starting to kind of pick up and I have people on my team who are sensitive and the equipment's kind of starting to go off and I'm like, okay. And as I'm filming and I'm moving around the room, uh, I'm facing uh, what ultimately is a doorway going into a bathroom. And that is where tons of paranormal activity uh, kind of bled in from because it tied from the master bedroom into this um, attached bathroom. And as I'm filming, all of a sudden I saw this creature come running at me and it was about uh, the size of maybe a bobcat and it kind of looked like a combination of bobcat and raccoon. I don't know how else to describe it, but I could only see the top of its head, the top of its legs and the back and kind of like part of a tail. It's like I couldn't see the face or the lower part of the body and I, I don't know how to explain that, but um, I will tell you that it, I swear it was running directly at me um, and I knew that it was a black creature that had black spots on top of it, um, which I also cannot explain. Uh, that kind of looked a little bit like diamond shaped spots. And this thing was moving so quickly that I remember I, I wanted to get out of its way. So I put the, I moved the camera down and I stepped out of the way and there was nothing there and nobody else sensed it. Nobody else felt it. Um, it was really very strange, and uh, when I reviewed the video, there was nothing there, but I was absolutely certain that this had happened to me, and I, that's what actually started me into asking other people if they had shadow animal stories, uh, because nobody else I knew had had this experience, and sure enough, people have been telling me uh, their shadow animal stories. I've compiled them on a page called Shadow Animals, so... Uh, that's my first one. The second one that I love with the paranormal pets um, is that I am also a rat owner. So I uh, have domestic rats. I am part of a Florida Rat Rescuers Network group. We actually take in uh, domestic rats that people cannot take care of for various reasons. Uh, I think almost all of mine right now are adopted uh, from that organization. But when I was much younger, um, probably 15 years ago, I had this one hairless rat and his name was Shadow because I was totally into Pulp Fiction so I named him after the Shadow and um, I loved him. He was one of the smartest rats I have ever known in my life and I don't know how to explain it other than to say that animals kind of come in tears. Now I kind of pull this a little bit from Buddhism with this idea but um, the idea of um, you have very human 
animal pets. You have very uh, standard animal pets, and then you have kind of like animal animal pets. I don't know how to explain it, or even just animal animals. Um, that some seem very human and very intelligent. And so uh, Shadow was one of these. And in fact, he was so smart that he would break out of his cage all the time. And I had to make a deal. I literally spoke out with him one day because I was like, I, I just can't. Because I have pugs and pugs and rats. I don't know how well they're going to mix. Uh, and so I, I remember saying to him, looking at him and saying, look, if you'll just stay in your cage during the day, I will let you out at night to run. And, uh, and he, he did. I mean, that's what's so creepy is that he actually listened to this and he behaved. Um, and I would wake up in the morning and he would be curled up on my shoulder. He would sleep on my shoulder. I mean, it was the sweetest thing. But he ended up with a tumor and I had to have him put down. And he was only a year old. That uh, domestic rats usually live two to four years. Um, but this tumor was growing up under his collarbone and was in his throat. And there was no way to operate on it. And... Um, it was the most humane thing to do, and I, my heart was broken. I loved this guy so much. And um, for the week afterwards, uh, there were three different instances where out of the corner of my eye, I saw him like running through the room like he used to do at night. And um, I would turn and look and there would be nothing there, but out of the corner of my eye, he looked completely solid. And this happened, like I said, three different times. Um, one time was very, very clear because he used to like to sit on a certain spot up in the wall because um, I had kind of like a half wall. And um, I swear I saw him up there sitting in his favorite spot and I turned to look and he wasn't there. And this was during the daytime. This wasn't even at night. And I was quite awake. I don't drink. There's no drugs because I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm like, nope, don't need it. Uh, plus, if you watch the news, the world is weird enough. So um, I really have no explanation for that. I have had rats for 20 years. Uh, they do live beautiful lives, but they are relatively short. And I'm, I have consistently had groups of rats because they're very social. Um, and I have never had another rat ghost. Just that one from Shadow who was just so, I think, self-aware. Um, and it was really kind of neat. So there you go.